We're joined today by Alison Holt, author of our recently published book, Governance of IT. Hi Alison, thanks for joining us. Um, could you take us through a little bit, tell us a little bit about yourself um, and how you came to writing the book for us? Mm, sure. Um, I studied maths at Imperial here in the UK and um, started work with a computer manufacturer back in the 80s and um, from sort of proceeded my way up the career path in IT and information technology and now I work as a virtual CIO for a number of organisations and directly consult around IT governance, um, mainly in New Zealand where I now live, but also other places around the world. And how did the book come about? Uh, the book came about because um, at the time I was chairing an ISO committee um, that was looking at the governance of IT and we fast-tracked an Australian standard to become an international standard, um, ISO IEC 38500. When we published the standard, which is, is aimed at directors and boards governing bodies, the standard itself is quite short and just a set of principles. It's aimed at an audience who are looking at a high-level strategy for IT. Um, but, it, but with that we found that there was uh, a lot of comments coming back to us around a need for expanding on the principles and understanding them. Uh, or understanding how governance of IT worked and, and what it was about and, and why are we doing it anyway. So the book is answering some of those questions. That there will be um, an ISO standard that will be an implementation guide for the standard, but this is more of a, a guide to um, what is the governance of IT and why is it valuable and why do we, why do we need to care about it? What, what can go wrong if we don't look ac across our organisation at IT and information? So th the first half of the book is aimed at um, directors, governing bodies, um, and what's the value of IT and information technology, and um, what are the sort of questions that they might ask to get really good answers back from their IT exec. Um, and then the second half of the book is aimed at the IT exec and below and to help them organise the IT and information technology in the organisation that, that meets the requirements of the directors um, and a sort of understanding of risks and the things that can go wrong but also um, a way to report back to the directors as well. So, so the book's in two halves, the first half is aimed at directors, the second half at the IT executives with a summary of each part so that the directors can read their half of the book and then read the summary from the second half of the book and know what we've said to the IT executive and the IT executive can read the summary that the directors part so that they know the advice we're giving to the directors and hopefully we will bridge that gap because at the moment um, I, I come across many boards who, who don't really have the right questions um, for their IT exec and they're getting um, really long reports or reports that don't really help them um, guide the strategic direction of the organisation from an, an IT point of view. And I deal with a number of CIOs and IT executives who don't really know what their board are looking for. So the idea of writing it in two parts is to bring the two audiences together. Um, in the early part of your book, you talk about an example of um, from Charles, Charles Babbage and his difference engine and the number of years that it took to develop that from initial concept to, to producing mm. it. Um, you mentioned there are other lessons to be learned from history. I wondered if you could elaborate mm. on those. Oh, absolutely. And I think we tend to think of um, governance of IT as being such a new topic um, because people only really started writing papers in earnest, maybe in, in the sort of 19, 1990s onwards. Um, but in fact, if you go back through history, um, the successful Chinese emperors and Persian emperors were the ones who really understood the value of information and understood how to control it and manage it. So we're just, we're just looking at some of the principles that these ancient successful rulers used and saying, well, how do we apply that now to information and IT? So sometimes IT governance does tend to get overlooked or not considered until there's you know, a disaster or something mm. bad that's gone wrong. Um, why is that? I think it's because IT is, is still seen as very much an operational part of, of an organisation. And in fact, it's only um, maybe if we cast back sort of 20 or 30 years where the IT people were the, the, the nerdy people who, who sat in the corner with the machine and they were never seen by the rest of the organisation. They were 
in an air-conditioned room with um, banks of computers and tape drives and to get to the IT people you would go through a set of security doors and swipe doors so most people in the organisation wouldn't be able to access them directly anyway um, so that we started off as an isolated group and I think that isolation is still sort of part of our culture today. So when it comes to implementing that all-important IT governance plan, what would you say are your top tips for doing that? I, th I think that the main thing is to have a set of stakeholders throughout the organisation who are really keen to make it work. Um, it's, it's very easy to go into an organisation and be an evangelist and make something happen and take in your um, IP and take in your templates and create something. But if it isn't in the hearts and minds of the people in the organisation, and if there isn't this desire to actually keep it, sustain it and, and keep it happening, then it, it won't last. So um, you, need, you need at least one ambassador enthusiast from your board of directors, and you need your CIO to be um, keen and on board as well. And then some significant people from the business as well. Um, but I think the more... The more people you have around the table to start with, who are keen, yes, we're going to do it, that the more successful you're likely to be. It's almost a case of when it does all go wrong, the people who will be involved at that point, when it goes wrong, need to be involved at the fore. Yes, absolutely, yes. yes. So, with that in mind, when it does go wrong, um, is, is there recovery from bad IT governance? Oh, generally, by the time people realise that they have bad IT governance, it's too late. They, they've, they've gone out of business and we, we talk about three aspects of risk, we talk about financial risk um, and, and maybe they've lost so much money they, they just can't stay trading. Um, we talk about opera, operational risk where maybe um, their service was down for, for two weeks and if, they, if they're an email provider, an internet service provider, that's, people would have gone elsewhere within two weeks. And then we talk about reputational risk, where something dreadful's happened. In that they've um, sent an email t um, with all my bank account details to the wrong person, or um, somebody's left a CD full of information on the train. And the, the reputation of the organisation concerned is blasted across the front pages of the newspapers. Th those things are very difficult to recover from. However, um, the, the humankind is very is very good and. Um, forgiving in many ways and I think if you can come up with um, well this is what happened um, and we're very sorry I, th I think that's a good start but I think to actually properly recover from bad IT governance you need to say this terrible thing happened we're very sorry um, we have identified the root cause of this problem and these are the bits of good IT governance that we're putting in now to make sure that this never happens again. And I think that sort of approach, then you, you do stand a chance of recovery. But if you've, if you've really upset all your customers and they've gone somewhere else, it's very difficult to get them back again. Um, the book, your book has had some fantastic reviews so far. Mm, um, thank the you. three that are quoted on the back, we've got the Institute of Directors, uh, the Engineering Director at Google, and uh, Rob from IT Skeptic. If there's one way you'd sum up your book, um, and recommend it to be read by some key people, what would you say? I, th I think the book um, covers a, a good common sense approach to the subject. I think um, in, in my consultancy and the work I've done over the years, I've, I've, seen, I've seen companies fail in this area so many times and I've tried to accumulate all the lessons learned that I've seen and through my international standards work. So. I would hope that if, if you read the book, that there would be something that would actually really um, resonate with you, in a sense, so that you would actually say, yes, okay, I, I can see this, and this is an approach I could take in my organisation. So it, it's, it's designed to be practical, and I've, I've used examples from all different areas of um, public-private government sectors, so that, that there should be something for everybody. Yeah. <laughs>